you're not going to win points with the world. If I hear once at the convention in 2022 in Anaheim that the world is watching, I'm going to... Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful day, at least in certain parts of the world. We're going to be talking about Buckgate. What is that? Coming up next. All right. Hey, everybody. Buckgate, Heron Gate, Deflate Gate, Trump Gate, Russia Gate, right? Watergate? We like to add gates to all sorts of things. Bill Gates Gate. There isn't one of those yet. There should be, though. That guy's corrupt and terrible. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about Tom Buck, uh, pastor in Texas, longtime pastor, SBC guy, big time conservative. I guess we're all conservatives, though, according to some people. The leftists who say we're not or are. Um, but of course, they're not. But they're trying to trick people. But anyway. Tom Buck is actually conservative and his wife, Jennifer, uh, she wrote an article uh, recently and it was about a thing she published or was going to publish a couple years ago. They'd given it to Karen Swallow Pryor. They talked to Rachel Denhalder. I never say her last name right. Uh, who was the whole Me Too gal and abuse and sexual stuff. And she's been in, the, uh, in and out of the SBC News and other things for a while. But a lot of people involved in this. Willie Rice, who was starting to run for... Um, his run for presidency in the SBC and now is not because he had some deacon. It's like, there's like 10 people, some other guy named Baumgartner. He looks like he's like 12 or 13. Uh, he's probably like older than that. I hope, <laughs> but I don't know. There's so many people. We're just going to talk about strictly Tom and Jennifer. Um, probably just going to do one video on it. So it's probably going to be a little longer than maybe my normal 20, 25 minute videos, but we'll see. It'll be longer because I want to watch a video. Because So there's a timeline we're going to look at right now. There is a few other things as well. A video that Tom and Jennifer put out. So this is from servant, servantsandheralds.com. Servantsandheralds.com. SBC entities work for the churches, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that's the goal. That's the point, or that's what they say they do. Uh, but yeah, they don't really seem to do that very much. Let's just get rid of me altogether so you can see everything. There we go. But <clears throat> what happens when the employees of the SBC entity refuse to help stop blackmail of a Southern Baptist pastor or try to use his wife as a weapon in order to keep them quiet? So this is going to, we can see here, this is not me. So SBT, S-E-B-T-S, Sebits. Uh, that's Southeastern where Danny Aiken is. Of course, he's involved too. That's where Karen Swallow Pryor is. She's an English professor, something like that. She used to be at Liber Liberty University. Willie Rice actively planning to demise Tom Buck. No, he's not necessarily mean that. Remember, the Bible teaches us about sins of commission and omission. So again, Willie Rice had like a deacon at his church and Tom asked the, about it and something like that. I don't really know. We're not really going to look into that too much again. But this just kind of gives a concise timeline. April 2018, Jennifer asked Karen Pryor, Karen Swallow Pryor, she's got a hyphenated name, that'll tell you a lot, uh, to help her edit the rough draft of it and eventually publish when the final draft is ready. Karen asked Jennifer to email the rough draft to help her edit. Karen emails it to Karen. So again, the story is that Tom and Jennifer had a really rough marriage. And we'll look at this for uh, a while or uh, in a second. They had a rough marriage for several years. And to be totally honest, Jenny and I have had a rough marriage or had a rough marriage uh, early on as well. And I resonate a lot with this. And I think a lot of people do. And see, this is the thing. Sin and the enemy loves when you hide. Loves when you believe that you're the only person struggling with pornography or anger um, or gossip or theft even or lying or just laziness. You just don't want to work. You don't want whatever. Right. Sin loves darkness rather than light. Right? Why? Because the deeds are evil. And when we expose it to the light, we realize, oh, there's other people that actually struggle with this because, oh, I don't know. No one's perfect. No one's flawless. It's a big deal. But the enemy wants to pretend that they are, that everybody else is but you. You're the only one who has a problem. 
Karen had an accident, unfortunately, although she seems to be fine now, to my knowledge. This was in May. So this is four years ago, almost May 2018. So the next month. So she can't do it. June 2018. Karen tells Jennifer, Karen Swallow Prior, tells Jennifer Buck that she's not able to edit. And then she, uh, Karen makes, I'll just read the whole thing. Try not to summarize too much because then sometimes it'll get clunky. Karen tells Jennifer that she is not able to help edit the rough draft. And only connection Karen makes for Jennifer, Karen Swallow Prior for Jennifer Buck, is with Jackie King from SBC Voices to potentially help edit. Jackie has never given the rough draft. She asked Jennifer to edit it herself and send it to Jackie when published. Ready to publish. With no one to help her edit, Jennifer sets it aside. So again, they have this story of redemption forgiveness in Christ. They were Christians, but it was very hard, right? Just because you're a Christian doesn't automatically mean you stop sinning. I wish, right? We all wish that, but that's not the case. Um, God's grace works through. And so this is recently 2022. So I'm doing this. uh, It is April 27th. So we're looking at a month or so ago. Tom Buck, two elders contact Willie Rice about his deacon. At the end of the phone call, Willie states he would seek advice from some people I value in connection leadership and figure out what to do from there. March 27, someone emails Jennifer Buck a rough draft of Baptist News Global. Baptist News Global, by the way, is a um, oops, sorry, is a very not conservative paper at all. They have Baptist in the title, but that doesn't tell you very much. It's kind of sadly like somebody saying they're a Christian. Usually that doesn't tell you very much. Other media outlets saying it was written by Jennifer, but since it's a rough draft, doesn't contain any names, it's need to be verified. And I'll, I'll link all these in the description so you can go read these for yourself if you've not already read these. A few days later, someone contacts Keith Whitfield, asking him if he could get Karen Pryor to verify the rough draft as being from Jennifer Buck. So again, there's this rough draft going around that was talked about four years ago with Karen Swallow Pryor and Jennifer Buck. Jennifer Buck had the, the story hey, we've got this story of redemption, forgiveness in Christ, Me Too movement. Remember, that's 2018. And I think, you know, there's there's anger, there's there's verbal abuse, there's abuse even prior to our marriage. We want to share this with because a lot of people have been helped by it. Karen Swallow Pryor gets in an accident, she can't help. Okay. But nobody else gets this, apparently. Nobody else has this. Karen, Karen refuses to verify it. Keith tells a person they won't verify it. Karen and Keith claim they thought it would be wrong to publish without Jennifer's permission. Yes, it would be wrong. Okay, that's good. They never contact Jennifer to let her know that someone else had stolen the rough draft and was seeking to publish it. So at some point in here, the later part of last month, people are starting to see this as something bad. And well, sin is bad, right? They're trying to blackmail. They're trying to do something. Tom and Jennifer are told that Jennifer's rough draft has been sent to media outlets. This is a few weeks ago. And Tom told it to keep quiet. Then, word salad today, my tongue twister. Then Tom is told to keep quiet about Willie Rice's situation to prevent Jennifer's rough draft from being published. There's where the blackmail comes out. Maybe it was an April Fool's joke because it was April 1st. Tom and Jennifer reach out to someone they trust that tells them that Karen Pryor had been contacted to verify the rough draft. So somebody else has the rough draft. Karen Swallow Pryor seemingly leaked it. And of course, that's why they're calling it Karen Gate. Who else had it? Tom and Karen, Tom and Jennifer say nobody else had it. I don't know. Very strange. Now we've got time. 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 7, 6, 9, 39, 3, 46. Crazy. Jennifer and Tom call Karen. Jennifer pleads with Karen to tell her to verify. She reminds Karen that is a sensitive information regarding a sin done before. So when I first read this, I thought, well, like, why would you put it in there though? Right. But again, there's the editing process, kind of like a rough draft. I might cut out some of this. I might not, uh, of a video. I have a goof thing. Actually, my family just came in right before, as I was recording and, uh, my, or some of my, my wife and some of my kids, and they gave me some strawberries and whipped cream. They're making butter. It's fun. And they, I just left it in. I'm of course going to edit it out. I might put it, I'll put a little blurb at the back just for fun. But you ha- you lay down all your stuff, all your cards on the table, as it were, and then you edit it. Well, of course, there's sizzling, you know, scandalizing stuff, apparently, in there. But I doubt Jennifer would have put in those things if she didn't want them at least known to some people. So it's really not sizzling or scandalizing, but people 
who don't really seem to believe in forgiveness or redemption think that it is. And so they're blackmailing. She reminds Karen that she had only asked to help edit the rough draft and was it. And that is one of the things that would have been removed. Karen refuses to give Jennifer and Tom the name. Okay. She's Karen tells Jennifer, they were your words. And my mom told me to never put in writing what you don't want the whole world to read. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> A couple minutes later, Jennifer and Tom called Danny Aiken. <coughs> Excuse me. Who's the president of SBS EBTS Southeastern. Danny is incensed at Karen's actions, right? So Karen Swallow Pryor knows something, but she's not saying anything. April 7th, a few days later, Jennifer article published at G3, which is this one right here that we'll briefly look at. I'll just look at some highlights again. I'll cover that in a moment. So we see that here and I'll read that. Danny Aiken texts Tom a few hours later saying he had been sick. I have been told no one is going to confirm to the media the essay about you and Jennifer. I hope this puts you at ease. Tom replies that it doesn't put an end and that he and Jennifer want him to keep his word to reveal who came to Karen to verify the rough draft. So again, somebody else had it. It got leaked a few years ago, apparently. And then somebody comes back to Karen Swallow Pryor. Hey, is this legit? Can we give dirt? Do we have dirt on Tom Buck. He's he's outspoken against critical race theory, intersectionality, all the woke nonsense that's infecting like a cancer, the SBC. And these people, these entity heads, I mean, Nam, many of the presidents, uh, I mean, Nam is horrendous. And too few people say those exact words. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> okay. And you shouldn't care either parishioner, churchman, whether you're in the Southern Baptist Convention or not. But these entities, these elites up here, they think they act just like political elites. I don't even know if some of these people are Christians or not. I really don't. With how they act and what they say, I mean, God be judge. But do you worship Christ or not, friend? Ed Litton not stepping down, even though he's caught in plagiarism and lying through his teeth repeatedly, and then being platformed at a few seminaries. Though he was not platformed at some seminaries, including Southeastern and Southern, which is interesting because usually the president will always preach at those places in the spring, which he did not. As far as I know, I could be wrong on that. But as far as I know, he didn't. He did go to Southwestern and New Orleans. Anyway, there's so much corruption. And again, God's grace through Christ is bigger than all this. Men, women, repent. Stop hiding your sin. Okay, stop it. Stop trying to blackmail. Stop trying to lie. Stop trying to lift up voices or lying about intersectionality and the wokeism resolution nine read this book intersectionality all the junk you're not going to win points with the world if i hear once at the convention in 2022 in anaheim that the world is watching i'm going to do something <laughs> i don't know but seriously i will be incensed and i hope you will be too person who's watching but that's what they said in Nashville. The world's watching. God's watching. What about God, though? Is God watching? Like, it's so small. Their view of God is tiny. And I'm talking about everybody. Because some people are like, well, this is what Arminianism gives you. No, shut up. This is what unbelief gets you. Okay? Don't think because this person has a, is a five-point Calvinist or a four-point Calvinist or they've got a high view of God's sovereignty doesn't mean it's foolproof. It's not at all. Just look at David Platt, Matt Chandler, Tim Keller, Russell Moore. All these other guys, Danny, Danny Aiken, Adam Greenway, they're all five-point Calvinists, or maybe four-point Calvinists. And they have this slippery, wishy-washy, middle ground, Al Mohler, I mean, on and on. Like, ha, it's like, and again, nobody's perfect. I understand that. But if these men and women that I just mentioned are hiding things, you should be ashamed of yourself. Repent and believe again the gospel. I'm not saying you lost your salvation, but stop trying to hide the sin that you're behind. Stop it. It's nonsense. April 7, Tom texts Danny Aiken to tell him he had just been on the phone call with Todd Beckett of SBC Voices. And then when Todd tells him Tom reached out to someone to get a copy of Jennifer's Rough Draft, he mentioned Karen Pryor is having him information. Danny never responds. A couple of days later, April 11, Tom sees Baptist Globe's News Global hit piece reveals, again, Baptist News Global, very leftist organization. It's not conservative at all. It's not part of the SBC. 
hit piece reveals the position Jennifer's rough draft <clears throat> and Baptist News Global makes multiple false accusations. Tom texts a link to Baptist News Global article. Danny Aiken, you obviously are wrong, Danny. Now, who came to Karen Pryor? Danny asks again to give him information who came by the end of the day. He asked Danny, sorry, give him information by the end of the day. Eight days after that, April 19th, FBC elders leadership issue statement. Later that day, Danny Aiken emails letter to FBC. This is First Baptist of Lindell. I believe where Pastor uh, Buck is, Tom Buck, husband to Jennifer, who wrote this whole thing. Finally reveals it was Keith Whitfield who came to Karen to verify Jennifer's rough draft. And Keith had received the request from anonymous text. Okay, so why are you hiding? Why are you hiding it then? And there's a bunch of questions in this. Like, oh, it's just, I'm just trying to find out information. Really? Is that what you're trying to do? I mean, I hope so. Otherwise, you're lying through your teeth. And all liars will have their place in the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. I mean, do you believe the Bible or not? Do you trust Christ or not? Like, the time of niceness is over. The 11th commandment is heresy and stupid. We're not doing it. Stop it. Stop it. As an SBC pastor myself, a graduate of Southern Seminary, this is shameful. Now, this isn't Southern proper, and I'm thankful for that. But there's guys at Southern that I would fire that are still working there. Things that Al Mohler said that, you know, we've all said stupid stuff. He said some stupid stuff that he hasn't backpedaled. Because the elites don't want to backpedal. They don't want to go back on their word. They don't want to go back and say, well, I was wrong. But you're a Christian, friend. Man and woman of Christ, you're a Christian. Repent, man. It's okay, woman, no shame. And that's what Tom and Jennifer are doing. And yet, just like Julie Royce and others, who's written you know several dozen articles against John MacArthur and his patriarchal blah, 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 and this David Gray article and abuse, it's this categorical shift that there's no hope or forgiveness. You can check out my MacArthur video if you haven't, although I'm sure many of you have who are watching this. And I did most of this, and I was a little kinder in that video than this video, maybe. I don't know. Um, the point is, these things don't have, when people categorically say, well, you're racist, you're sexist, you're an adulterer, you're an abuser, you're a victim, you're this. They have this identity that's not in Christ. And even still, identity in Christ, and there's another article I did with uh, Tim Frisch, who I'll actually be interviewing uh, this Saturday. So look for that on a Contra Talk. It's going to be dropping this Saturday, uh, a few days from now. But we did an article about don't find your identity in Christ. And because you look in church history, there's almost no, until the 1950s, people talking about identity. And it wasn't until the 2000s where I find my identity in Christ. I used to find it in sports and in sex and in gambling and this and this and this and this. Now I find my identity in Christ. And it's like, but that's not even in the Bible. <laughs> so it's like, we kind of use this modern parlance. And I know cats aren't in the Bible and oil changes aren't in the Bible either. So we can't do it. Eh, that's what I'm saying. Like, the lingo of whatever it is, isn't in the Bible, right? We should be in Christ. You know, we should just be in Christ. But finding identity in Christ is back to Jennifer and Tom Buck. This article. So this article, this is from, this is one I just referenced a few weeks ago, April 7. This is at g3min.org. Again, I'll put this in the link. Let's see, where is it? Over the years, my husband and I have recounted this to our church family and those we counsel. So right there, it's already news. It's already knowledgeable. We already know it. That's what we're doing. It's not that big of a deal. Okay? So this isn't hiding anything. God who helped us is able to help you. Right? So redemption. This is the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. Once you're an adulterer, you're not always, quote unquote, an adulterer. I mean, we see this with AA. I'm an alcoholic. My name is Richard. I'm an alcoholic. Blah, blah, blah. You're an alcoholic or did you struggle with alcohol? You abused it. You used it. And now you're free in Christ. But if you're not free in Christ, you are still chained. But you're chained to your sin. Right? You're chained to your sin because, well, you've not been forgiven it. Tom's anger and controlling nature surfaced more frequently. He was quick to voice his disapproval in ways that were certainly abusive. So again, we're talking about abuse. And this is the whole kind of the new racism, if you will. Like, oh, you don't want to be racist. You don't want to be abuser. And Jesus says, if you look with lust, you've committed adultery. And if you've been angry, you've murdered. So everyone is an angry, murderous 
adulterer. Okay? Everybody. Men even more than women, because men struggle with those. Women gossip more and, you know, subvert male authority and other things and struggle with that. But men and women struggle with different sins. But you don't live in your sin. Like, that's the difference. I'd convince myself, she says, that I was the issue in our marriage. If I could just respond right, I believed he wouldn't get so angry. In my grief, the Lord provided an older, godly woman who taught me how to grow in Christ. It's amazing. All thanks to work together for good. It's wonderful. And this is what the gospel is. Okay? This is what it's all about. I finally felt like my feelings were validated. So Dottie's talking to her, this older lady, and then they get the husband involved with Tom, and he's got a teachable spirit. Amen, amen, amen. She never suggested divorce as an option. And this is where so many people do this. And just, again, let's be real here for a moment. Oh, abuse is divorce. The Bible doesn't say that, though. Right? And we're so quick to be like, how dare you? You mean she should just take it? No. No one's saying automatic divorce or abuse victim only. There's a season for separation. There's a season for restoration. Is the guy actually saved? Or is he make-believer? Or is he really a Christian, but he's struggling with whatever? Whatever sin's going on. Whatever else thing's happening. What's going on? Is he using pornography? Right? Is he worried and stressed out about money? Did he lose his job? I mean, there's all sorts of other things. And why can't the woman forgive? Because she's sinned against God way more than the husband has ever sinned against her. I mean, do we not need Hosea for this very moment? Hosea, who marries an actual hooker, right? And she goes, and he has kids with her, and then she goes out on him. And ultimately, this is a picture of Israel and God, and how Israel is, I want to use harsher words, a hooker. She's a prostitute. She's unfaithful. And we have such, oh, I'm starting to get a little angry, because the SBC elites, even the PCA, Big Eva in general, you have such an anemic, wussy God, a spineless God. And you claim Calvinism and strong sovereignty. Nonsense. Your actions betray you. One glimmer of hope is that my husband had a teachable spirit. There it is. But right there it says, when I would pray, playfully rested a Coke on Tom's neck, he freaked out, right? Grabbed his hand, slapped the wrist. And both of us were stunned. His anger had reached a new level. This scared me. Rightfully so. And no one is saying, no one is saying, where's he getting there? Sorry. No one is saying that that's fine. She's writing about redemption, being bought back as a slave of sin and now a slave of Christ. Big difference. Big, big difference, right? It was this moment Tom realized that he needed help. Dottie's husband, Bob, was willing to teach us through the scripture on how to build a marriage on Christ. Restoration did not happen overnight. Restoration did not happen overnight. One thing she says, I look back on those years and I don't feel shame or resentment. But that's what the world wants. And the SBC in general seems to just pattern everything after the world. I mean, the, the rot and the cancer that is so thick and deep in the SBC. I mean, we are at stage four. And I, and, I, I don't, and I don't pay attention to a lot just because, you know, I don't want to have high blood pressure and other things. And I have other things to concern myself with. But this is a big deal. Tom Askell says the SBC doesn't matter. That it isn't a big deal, but it matters, right? Because the PCUSA has been woke liberal leftist crazy for over a century and yet it still exists marching through although you know smaller than it used to be smashing through like godzilla and trashing god's name christ and his church and what the bible actually means so the sbc if all the conservatives leave so-called is not it's going to be around 100 years from now 50 years from now right less Less to a degree, yes, less, but it'll still have such an impact. And I don't want that. Do you want that? A bad impact, a negative impact, a terrible impact. We don't want that. Restoration did not happen overnight. In disbelief, I literally laughed out loud when Bob said that beyond our wildest dreams, our marriage could be that. 
and that cut Tom to the heart. As I look back on those years, I don't feel shame or resentment. Like, oh yeah, I skipped up, sorry. The hardest part for me was to admit that Tom did not own all the blame for the mess he created. He never denied his portion, but I had to learn my own sin was revealed. And my actions and reactions and responses, the Lord desired to deal with my heart too. Tom and I are amazed at the reconciliation and restoration of God has worked in us. Reconciliation. Not between black and white. Racial reconciliation. That's a, that's a smokescreen. Because when are we supposed to go back to? If you believe in that, think about it. Put it in the comments. When are we supposed to go back to? Like, at what point? 1960? 1860? 1618? Not 1619, right? Genesis 3? Like, where? Babel? Like, where are we supposed to go back to? Because, like, if a husband and wife, in this case, they get married, lovey-dovey, oh, I love this, everything's great, wonderful, and they are slowly doing this, separated, he's angry, she went out on him, they're both not doing what they're supposed to do, and they work through redemption, forgiveness in Christ, maybe one of them is not even a Christian, and they're reconciled. They're brought back to where it's re, like, reconnect, right? It's connected at one point, you know, your plug gets unplugged when you're weed eating or something or blowing the leaves around your yard. You go reconnect it, reconcile. Right. Words matter, people. Where are we supposed to do that with black versus white? Again, I've never heard an answer. And I've asked my more melanated friends, my less melanated friends, my more social justice uh, supporter friends and my less social justice supporter friends. I, I don't I don't I don't see an answer. All right. So as to not make this video too terribly long, um, the well, the video was not playing. I'm not sure why technical difficulties i guess i'm not live but i could put it in later i'm not going to just because i don't want to make this too video too long there's a 16 minute video of tom and jennifer talking and they're at their home it's on youtube i'll link it below please go watch that and it has multiple points that are addressed in the article in this timeline and these other things that uh, it's just i don't know it's shameful because so many people just pretend like, oh, we're for the victims. We're for this. It's like the Black Lives Matter argument. Like, oh, Black Lives Matter. Well, unborn Black lives don't matter. And older Black lives don't matter. And hardworking conservative Black lives don't matter. And people who want to pick themselves up by their own bootstraps, so-called, don't matter. It's only the victim in their 20s who doesn't have a job but has disposable income that can support your movement and buy you expensive houses in places like Beverly Hills those are the black lives that matter. I mean, showing partiality is massively wicked. Ephesians 1.14. The spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Purchase his own people. We are purchased with Christ. We are no longer slaves. Romans 2.11 Back up to nine. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But glory and honor and peace to everyone who does good, the Jew first and also the Greek, for God shows no partiality. How many, I mean, Galatians is the book of our hour, the book of our moment. And of course, this is Romans. Let's just get over to Galatians real quick because it's just, I mean, it's all good. Oh, this is my favorite. It's all good. No other gospel. I'm astonished that you quickly deserting him who called by the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but that they trouble some. But there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Are there people in our world who want to distort the gospel of Christ? What do you think, viewer? Let me know in the comments. Tell me what the most explicitly heinous thing is. What's going on? What, what what do you see as the threat, the gospel that is being changed? Go listen to Tom and Jennifer's video. Like I said, it's 16 minutes long. You can listen to it on a little bit faster speed. I'll link it in the description. Those people, the elites especially, who pretend like everything's fine. We're all conservatives, and yet we still have a, a lying plagiarist president. And that, you know, he's a conservative too, he says. What, what, what about any sort of dignity? 
What about any sort of fidelity? The time, again, the time of niceness and quiet has closed. It will come again, but it's not coming for a while. Now we're at war. A war with words, a war with ideas. Sometimes you don't need to be so careful. I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to be salacious. I'm not trying to get attention. I'm trying to call the spade a spade because I'm sick of and tired of the wickedness that is not addressed by the elites that should address it. Those who we've been trusting for the last 20 to 40 years. Where are those in the conservative resurgence of the 1970s and 80s? I don't see them. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't. I mean, there's a few. I don't want to paint a bleak picture. But there are very, very few. And maybe that's just because we're looking at it hindsight and history and everything else. And it's hard to see the forest from the trees. We are in the middle of the forest and we're stuck. And we don't know what we're doing. But who does? Christ, which I hope you found this helpful. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you have not. I just passed 500 subs. I'm very thankful for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, marching toward a thousand, and we'll see how that goes from there. Uh, if you do want to support the channel, you can do that by buying me, buying me a cup of coffee. Uh, it's just a phrase: buy me a cup of coffee.com slash Richard Contra. The link is in the description as well. It's just kind of like a tip, like Patreon. It does help that I can produce more videos if I'm able to get sustainability there. Uh, I won't have to pick up other work, other places, which will then allow me to produce more content. Right now, I'm only doing about three shows a week. I will be at the Conservative Baptist Network convention, uh, conference, conference, uh, on tomorrow <clears throat> and uh, Friday. So hopefully go live from that. I want to do at least maybe an interview or two if I can get something or I'll just try and do maybe some streaming um, during that as well. I'll have a show dropping on Friday, though I would have already, I'll pre-record it because I won't actually be there in my studio as I am right now. So anyway, care you be against the world for the world. Video, what's up? I... Uh huh. Yeah. Some strawberries with homemade cream. Yeah. Ooh, homemade cream. <laughs> it's so good. Making butter. Yeah. Making butter. Oh. We're supposed to make that. Yeah. Uh -uh. Why? Why would you draw on my book? That's not. A... It tastes good. No, it tastes not... so good. I bet. That's not a wise thing to do, son. Thank you. It doesn't have options. All right. I feel. Goodbye. Okay, bye. Bye. You need a little filming sign. I know. I just started. It's fine. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. And cut. We're gonna do it to get rid of it. Yeah, just keep going. Whatever. <laughs>